Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an interesting rational equation. We have x squared plus 3x plus 2 equals 168x squared divided by x squared plus 9x plus 18. And we're going to be solving for x values. First of all, I want you to notice that both x squared plus 3x plus 2 and x squared plus 9x plus 18 can be factored. So let's go ahead and do the cross multiplication first. Now, if you multiply, cross multiply, you're going to get the following. x squared plus 3x plus 2 multiplied by x squared plus 9x plus 18. And that gives us 168x squared. I just want to introduce uh, two, well, I, I want to talk about two different methods, even though the first method is just going to be kind of brief. All right? So the second method will be complete. The first method is not going to be complete. So if you go ahead and distribute the whole thing, you can go ahead and multiply these. You're going to get x to the fourth, and then 9x cubed, and then 18x squared, and then 3x cubed, plus 27x squared, plus 54x, plus 2x squared, plus 18x, plus 36. You're going to get nine terms, right? That's a lot of terms. Let's go ahead and combine like terms. We get x to the fourth, and then we have x cubed here and here. That makes 12x cubed. You have x squared in three places. 18 plus 27 is 45. 45 plus 2 is 47x squared. And then we have 54x plus 18x, which is 72x. And finally, we have our constant 36. And the whole thing is equal to, okay, I was going to say zero, but not, it's 168x squared. Anyways, we're going to go ahead and uh, subtract it from this number, and we're going to get our cortic, right? Now, when you subtract, you're going to get a negative answer. 168 minus 47 is 121, but that's going to be a negative because we're subtracting a larger number. And then plus 72x plus 36. Wow, interesting. Some of these numbers are multiples of 12. 121 is 11 squared, so on and so forth. Is that a special scenario? Probably. I don't know. It could be. But this is a quartic equation. And guess what? Quartic formula is quite complicated. I don't think you want to use it. You could try the following. Uh, you could set it equal to the product of two quadratics and then try to find the unknown coefficients that way. And if there are integer solutions, if this is factorable nicely, which I'm guessing it would be, then you'll get the values of A, B, C. So this is what I'm talking about. Like you can kind of write this as X squared plus A, X plus B multiplied by X squared plus CX plus D. And then from here, we get like BD equals 36. If A, B, C, D are integers, then, you know, hopefully we're going to uh, find their values. But that's going to take forever. And actually, that ends up giving you a cubic equation. So there's actually a nicer way to do it. You can go ahead and get rid of the uh, cubic term, which is X cubed. And you can do so by using a special substitution, X equals Y minus because that's a plus sign we have to use a minus sign y minus and now you're thinking about the coefficient of x cubed divided by the highest power which is 4 so 12 divided by 4 so this should give you uh, a nicer equation which is gonna have no uh, cubic term okay anyways this is a long story let's go ahead and talk about the second method because it's more fun great so Here's how the second method works. Let me go ahead and rewrite the original problem. And actually, I had, I already had this in cross product form, so let me go ahead and write it that way instead of writing the original. But the idea is the same. You cross multiply, but don't distribute. Why? Because we're, we're, going, to, we're going to write this in a very special way. Now, a lot of times when you have an equation like this, we divide both sides by something. But this equation is not a good fit for that, so I'm going to do the following first. Factor each equation. x plus 1, x plus 2. That's how we can factor. Remember at the beginning I told you these expressions are both 
factorable. And you should be familiar with how to factor trinomials. Remember the idea, find two numbers whose product is two and whose sum is three, find two numbers whose product is 18 and whose sum is nine, those numbers are three and six. Once you find those numbers, you got your factors. Easy, right? Once you know the drill. Now, what about the right-hand side? It's just gonna stay like that. Now, in order for this equation to turn into something special, we kind of need to have the same, same constant term. And what that means is, if there's a way to get the same constant, I'm, I'm talking about constants here, 2 and 18, are different, right? But think about it. We can make them the same by considering the following. If you go ahead and group these two together, like multiply together, and then multiply these two together, you're going to get the same constants because 1 times 6 equals 2 times 3, right? Cool. That's the idea. I'm going to multiply these two first, x squared plus 7x plus 6, and then multiply the ones in the middle, x squared plus 5x plus 6 equals 168x squared. Still not very nice, but here's the thing. We're going to go ahead and divide both sides by x squared because we want to get a constant on the right-hand side. Does that make sense? So let's go ahead and do it. Divide by x squared, divide by x squared. Obviously, this is going to give us a nice result, but what about the left-hand side? How do you divide a product by x squared? Easy. You divide each factor by x because x squared is x times x. So you can kind of split this up into x squared plus 7x plus 6 divided by x multiply by x squared plus 5x plus 6 divided by x, and that's equal to 168. Notice how we broke it down. When you multiply these two, you're going to get what we had before. Now, this is the critical part. Split up everything, like divide by x, you're going to get x plus 7 plus 6 over x. Great. And this one is going to give us x plus 5 plus 6 over x. If you have, still haven't seen it, let me go ahead and write it this way. x plus 6 over x plus 7, and x plus 6 over x plus 5. I kind of separated the 5 so you could see better. Now, here's the critical part. This is the coolest part. x plus 6 over x repeats. That's how we were able to get the same term by using the same constant. That's why we had to manipulate this a little bit. Make sense? Now we're going to call this t, any variable will do. t plus 7 times t plus 5 is equal to 168. At this point, you can use the quadratic formula or think about how 168 can be factored such that its factors are two apart. Let's go ahead and look at it that way. And I immediately see, I don't know if you've seen it, but 14 times 12 is 168. So if this is 14, this is going to be 12. That gives us t equals 7. Awesome. But there's another value. If this is negative 12, this is going to be negative 14 because they're two apart. And from here, I get t equals negative 19. But what is t? t is x plus 6 over x. x plus 6 over x is equal to 7. This should give you x equals 1. That's one of the solutions. What about the other solution? I don't know. Let's find out. x squared plus 6 equals 7x. x squared minus 7x plus 6 is equal to 1. Obviously, we're looking for two numbers, negative 1 and negative 6. So the other number is 6. Of course, because six when x is 6, 6 over x is 1. So I should have known that, right? x equals 1 x equals 6. Awesome. What about the negative 19? And you can find out, you just set it equal to negative 19. I don't think we're going to have real solutions. But anyways, that basically gives us an idea. Now, here's the graph. And the graph actually gives you, never mind, there was another solution that I didn't find, uh, to two solutions, this one and that one. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.